Hello and welcome to the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative Summer Sandbox. My name is Jessica Edens and I am a graduate research assistant for the Cleveland Teaching Collaborative at Cleveland State University. My presentation is going to be on how to enhance literacy in our elementary classrooms. So to begin, what is literacy? It is the skill and ability to read, write, and listen, the development of learning the process of words, sounds, and language. And there are several different elements to literacy, but a few to mention are phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, comprehension, and of course, knowledge building. Um, if what you're looking at here is the Reading Rockets website. I am a big Reading Rockets fan. It's an excellent resource for educators and parents who are trying to get their young children to enjoy reading from the start. Besides the research behind all of these articles, they provide great points and information in all sorts of topics. So how can educators and parents promote a positive learning and reading environment? This paragraph is very important, especially where I highlighted, and it was taken from the Reading Rockets that I just showed on the previous slide. So what this says is, a successful teacher of beginning reading generates enthusiasm and appreciation for reading. Research reviews have repeatedly stated that children who are read too often, who are led to enjoy books, and who are encouraged to read widely are more likely to become good readers than children who lack these experiences. It is crucial that teachers provide their students with every opportunity possible to have a book in their hand. And when it comes to literacy, we need to think more openly. Rather than having the thoughts of there's not enough time during the day, or my students aren't going to benefit from this or that, we need to be open to the possibilities we are creating as educators, and we need to read to students and children as often as possible. So some learning objectives to making this happen um, could be create lifelong readers that are still meeting instructional goals, engage students in a variety of books, set high expectations for your students, provide a comfortable space for reading, and value your students' opinions. As an educator, these learning objectives are drilled in the back of my head as being top priority, and these five are all manageable and doable in the classroom. In a literacy class that I took at Cleveland State, I needed to read a book and create a professional development presentation. And the book my group chose was The Book Whisperer by Donalyn Miller. And this book was an excellent read on easy and very practical strategies for students in the primary and intermediate grades. The book's based off the teacher's sixth grade class, but it really could be adapted and modified for any grades below six. So some key points to take away after reading this was allowing and provide choice in your classroom. Choice of books and topics in the classroom, just that engages students because they're interested in what they're learning and they're choosing their reading path. Um, being an advocate for reading, being excited and enthusiastic with everything involving reading is so important. And we also want to make sure we evaluate and reflect on our own attitude of reading because our students will recognize and see that. Um, and understand that readers are made, not born. We want to create a love and passion for reading in our students. These are some examples that I took away from the Book Whisperer that educators can do in their own classrooms. Providing books of interest to students so they can decide on what they want to read. This alone allows students to take hold of their learning and feel excited to read. These books of choice can be a variety of genre-specific books that are aligning to the state standards because while providing choice for our students, we still want to make sure that we're meeting our standard and learning objectives as educators. Providing an open library where students can bookshop openly. This is so important and in my three years of classroom experience, the libraries were not giving an open feel to my students. Um, like students rarely got to choose books out of the library. It was almost as if the classroom library was more for decoration than for use. Um, and lastly, create an on the go basket for traveling transition time. The thought of that seems a bit much, but the benefits coming from it outweigh the other side. Like picture yourself lining your students up for an event at school that day, whether it's picture day, bathroom breaks, specials, and instead of expecting students to stand there quietly, provide them with a chance to grab a book, stay engaged, and stay busy. Even if it's only for a few minutes, those minutes count. So going back to our learning objectives on the previous page, our goals are aligned to those objectives. So our first goal in enhancing literacy in the classroom is to create a space for reading. This guide from Erin Lynch is on creating an enriching classroom in the 21st century. 
I love this entire layout, but want to point out the reading corner during this presentation. So right here where I am drawing is the reading corner and it's the classroom library hosts flexible seating for students. In this layout, it mentions that she has large pillows, bean bags, yoga balls. I even see a little sofa and rug. The library is at student level, easy accessible, and most likely organized and designed to differentiate between students' reading levels. I had an elementary teacher who hung string lights above her reading corner, and it was super cozy. I know my whole class loved reading and sitting in that corner, and it was almost motivating to get your work done because you wanted to be one of those people to sit in that corner and silently read. All right, so our second goal is to have conversations about books with our students. So as educators, we might expect students to have a certain mindset towards reading, but we never take the time to actually engage in a conversation about books and why they are important. So maybe starting an open discussion with your class on how they choose the books they read. Some answers might be expected and others might be a surprise. Discussing the difference between a summary, plot, and resolution, and although these are areas of reading that are taught anyways, it is great to have open conversations about them for every story that is read in class, and open and honest conversations about reading habits. This is showing your students that you recognize these behaviors, and it's okay. Explain that we can change these habits, but it is okay to feel a certain way about reading and books in general. Our third goal is to value our students' opinions. Value students' opinions. So if a student says a book is boring, use this as an opportunity to tell the class that some books are boring, and that's okay. I could also explain to my class that, hey, some books are boring to me too, and there are some books that I just can't get into. Miller, the author of The Book Whisperer, she says, don't let a bad book choice slow down your momentum of reading, and that is so important. We don't want to allow our students to become discouraged or thinking reading is a chore, but guide them to be passionate and interested readers. Guide them to a motivating place where they'll learn to love reading. Ask your students, are there books that we should share as a class together? What are some books that you would suggest? So valuing their opinion, that is just so important. I student taught in a third grade classroom and started a book club for my students. So by reading level and then by their interests, I placed the students in small groups. And we had many open discussions about the book we were reading. Um, we answered together many comprehension questions throughout the reading, and we just had so much fun. The book club was engaging and it allowed students to practice their oral reading skills along with their comprehension skills. And it honestly just opened up so many opportunities for them to branch out of their comfort zone. And our last goal is to set high expectations. In the book whisper, Miller sets an expectation for her students to read 40 books in a school year, and that was for her sixth grade classroom. The standard could still be set high for grades K to 5, and I think it's important to set this high standard for all grades K to 12, but I would just modify the number based on grade level. This expectation should be set during the first week of school, and setting high expectations and high standards allows students to reach a potential they may not have known that they had. So when I was reading this book and I saw that she set this expectation of 40 books in a school year, I was almost taken back like, whoa, that's kind of, that's pretty, that's high. <laughs> but her class did it and they surprised themselves. And it just goes to show that setting those expectations so high motivates children. It motivates students of all grade levels, honestly, between K and 12. Now I'll get into some supplemental instruction and resources that are very easy, accessible for educators and parents. So the first resource that I have here for educators and parents is ABC Mouse, and this is aimed towards kids who are ages two to eight. I use this platform with my two and a half year old and he absolutely loves it. And we signed him up through our library. So we have a free subscription just from having a library card and my hometown library, they offered that for free. Um, but otherwise, if you don't have a library card or if your library doesn't offer that, then you can purchase a subscription. Um, but this website is, it's just great. It provides lessons and activities in reading, math, science, and more. And then here at the top, let me get my marker. It also has an academic learning academy and that's age, um, ages eight to 13. So that's great. 
So the second resource that I have here is SightWords. So SightWords.com, I have it as K-4. to um, I have it as Supplemental Phonics Instruction and Activities because it's providing teaching strategies, flashcards, and games. And most educators um, at all school districts will provide parents, hopefully with resources of take-home sight words just to practice or just even a list. So this resource right here is free and I think it's just great to have that extra practice. So lastly, I'm going to provide this last resource for K-12 in this presentation and this is the Tween Tribune. So this resource is great because it's free. Um, you just have to sign up and I think you can just say that you're a teacher or a parent. Um, but you're choosing from a variety of articles and topics, and it's based on grade level and lexile level for students. So here at the top, these are the tabs that you can drop down, and it's just categorized by grade level. And then right here, they have the four lexile levels. And for those who don't know what that is, that is the measure of how difficult a text is. So if you have your student's reading ability level already, you can choose it um, for one of the four that are listed right here. And this is great because this is also differentiating your students with the passages that you're providing in class. And each article comes with a quiz that students can take on a tech device or you can print them out and distribute them in the class. So in conclusion on how to enhance literacy in the classroom, um, overall literacy is just very important. We can introduce literacy to children as young as birth and that's just important for their development, but also for children and adults, they benefit so much from reading too. Um, it's important as educators and parents to provide endless opportunities for students. So we wanna engage students in books of their choice, and we wanna provide them with different genres. This allows students to be interested in their learning and also follow the learning objectives and standards that need to be met. Um, next, we want to provide a comfortable space for reading. So like we saw in Erin Lynch's diagram, she provides a reading corner with flexible seating and an open library. Next, we wanna make sure we value our students' opinions, and that is so important no matter the topic. We wanna to create positive relationships with our students and with effective communication and valuing their thoughts, this can be done. Educators need to set high expectations, so this is something we do without realizing, but it's also something we don't do enough of. And I love Miller's standard of 40 books in a school year. When I read that, I thought in my head that 40 books, that's, a, that's just so much for sixth grade. Um, but her class surprised themselves and they got close enough or they did complete the 40 and that's just so incredible. And it put it in perspective for me as an educator to set those high expectations because it really does allow students to reach a potential they may have not known they had. Um, and lastly, research easily accessible resources for kids age birth to 18. So there are so many resources out there and one tip that I would love to mention is um, the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. So I get books sent free to my house monthly for my one-year-old and my two-year-old. And I think the age goes up to five. But with a quick Google search, you can sign your entire household up. Every kid would get a book for free sent to the house um, monthly. And it's just, it's great. Um, but I hope this presentation was helpful for new educators or even some that have been in the field for a while. And I just want to say thank you for listening.